to send a message out to all the acoustic guitar players on the planet that are doing something like this. Yes, multiple outputs on the back of your guitar, uh, which suggests that you have multiple pickups. And why you've done that is, of course, you want to have independent outputs, so you can send them to different mixers or different channels or whatever, so you can have independent control over each pickup. Now, most guitars only have one output. I've got two, like many most players do, and then some players have three, and then the real wild crazy guys out there will have four. A lead acoustics released a little box called a Stomp Mix 4, and I think it works particularly well for acoustic guitars with multi source pickup systems. So it fits in the palm of your hand, uh, you can stick it in your pocket, it can live in your pocket, you don't have to feed it though, and uh, you can tour the world with it in your pocket, like I plan to do when I go on tour. So it's got four channels, it's got assignable foot switches, assignable outputs. It's got a headphone jack, it's 32-bit digital, uh, it's got a variety of effects including shimmer, gate and compressor, so a ton of features packed into a tiny little box. Now I've worked with a lot of different mixers and I've worked with a lot of different preamps and saw a lot of great ones at the NAMM show, but they don't seem to be able to do what this little guy can do um, for the price of $2.99 and in such a small format. And uh, So we're going to dive in and I'm just going to show you why I think this is a game changer and addresses the needs uh, of finding a mixer for acoustic guitar players out there with multi sources pickup systems. So without further ado, let's get started and I'll show you why I think it's such a great little device. So right now you're looking at the uh, main menu of the Stomp Mix 4 and uh, as you can see I'm coming into two channels right here. So I've got two pickups on my guitar, I've got my magnet coming out of uh, the red coated cable which is at the back and then the LR bags. Anthem is the black one. So my black anthem is going into channel one, and my Seymour Duncan Magma is going into channel two. I've also got two more channels at the top, which you can use for another guitar. Of course, you don't want everything live at once, so you've got a little mute button right here. So if I just click once, or push, I should push and hold, now the guitar is dead, right? So this is extremely useful if you have a keyboard player with a cowbell patch and you want to kind of mute him. <laughs> there are kind of three different sections for for volume in this unit. And, and I kind of look at it as, as like a mixer, and I might be wrong on this, but hopefully not. So if I take a look at a regular mixer, on the top I have the trim pot. And the trim pot is where I want to make sure I'm not overloading anything. And then on my fader, for that channel, I would usually put it up to like unity gain, or at zero. And then of course on the master fader, once again like at zero or unity gain, which is probably what I want to call it. So your trim pot is kind of the most important part to make sure you're not uh, overloading or distorting the unit. So in this unit, I believe, the trim pot is up on the top right here, and you get it for channels, uh, uh, channel 1 and channel 2, uh, and not for channel 3 or 4, so just for the two channels. And of course, it's uh, quite a range that you can work with, it's a, it's a volume, like a pot, trim pot. Um, so if you're too hot, you obviously want to turn, turn down. Now, if you've got an instrument that's still too hot, they've got a pad, uh, pad button for both of those channels, 1 and 2. And then if for some reason, if you require phantom power for your particular pickup system, um, it's got a, there's a phantom power switch. As you can see, it turns on, right? And also, these two uh, connectors I've got in here um, for channels 1 and 2 are also, it's also an XLR, you can put XLR cables into there as well. Okay, so now they've got that out of the way. Um, then we have, of course, I was talking about your channel fader, which I believe these guys would be. So I'll turn both pickups down. Now there's my, my uh, Anthem pickup, and then there's my Seymour Duncan, I can bring in the mic, right? Now as you can hear, when I brought the volumes, there was an increase of volume by bringing both volumes up. If there was a drop in volume, then you got phasing issues, and we'll discuss how that's dealt with in a second, because this mixer can deal with it. So right now I've got those two guys going. Now if I want to look for the third place where there's a... Uh, volume change. I would hit on this parameter button. Uh, so I'm jumping ahead, but here we are the main level output of the unit. So I'm kind of treating this like my master fader and it's even showing like a zero zero as uh, the, max, the maximum output and everything is kind of off right there, right? So as you can hear it's off and at max. 
So if I'm at max, it's fine as long as my trim pot or input gain is not overdriven. So there you go. That's kind of like the three sections for, uh, for volume control. Now I'm going to go back to my channels, which is page button right here to get there. And you can see I've got channels one and two. And as you heard, I can dial these in, which is cool. But now what I want to do is I want to actually EQ, let's say, the uh, LR bag. So if I push channel one, I then get the EQ section. And you have EQ section for each of these buttons for all four channels, okay? So as you can see, I've got low, and I've got high, and then I've got a sweepable mid um, with a dial here for plus or minus 12 dB, which is effective in all these buttons or, or uh, potentiometers. Now, the range from uh, the sweepable, I believe, is from 80, 80 or 60, yeah, you can see it, I can't, but uh, and then up to think 6K, okay? And I'm not going to bring any of that in, I'm not sure, we're just playing around right here. So, but I'll give you an example of just how much range the, uh, the plus or minus 12 dB does on the lower side of things. See, you have a, a lot to play with. And what I like about these controls, it just reminds me of like an analog mixer with this bass, dead in trouble. Uh, but you, at least you can work your, your mids a bit better. And then I press again, and um, remember I was talking about those volume changes and phasing problems? Well, here's how this mixer deals with it. You have a, basically a phase reversal built in. So you can hear the two sounds. I'm going to go with that. It's a bit fuller sounding for me, but there is no right or wrong. It's whatever works best with your, uh, your system and what, what you like to your ear. Uh, there's also a notch filter and and a uh, high pass filter, which I guess uh, goes from 50 all the way up, right? Um, so how would you use this? It's basically, if it's at 50 and you turn it on, because you can have it off, that means anything below 50 won't come out. So any like low rumbles and stuff like that, you'll be getting rid of right off the bat. And you can do that for, for all four channels again, right? Um, so I think that takes us to our next press of the button, which brings us to the compressor and gate. So I'll turn the compressor on. You can hear it a bit, it's very mild. Just smooths things out a little bit. Yeah, it just smooths things out a bit. And uh, especially if you've got a guitar, maybe that's too trebly, you can use that to kind of help you smooth out the top end a bit. And the gate will, I, I haven't had to use a gate before, but I guess if you have a noisy guitar, and when you're not playing, you can have that on, and of course it'll eliminate all the noise off stage. So another handy feature. Um, moving on, so that takes us to the end of the pages for channel one. So if I go back to channel one again, let's just go through that. So I got uh, my volume, I've got the EQ, I've got the phase reverse and the, the low, uh, high pass filter, and then I've got, of course, the compressor and gate. All right, um, so I'll hit the page button again, and I'm back to main mix. So now I, what I would do is I would jump to the next button over here. So if I press the button once, you're going to see that I get the ability to pan. So when we get into the effects, you're going to see that you can have an effect coming out of one channel and then another effect coming out of the other channel. Uh, pan left and right, right? Which is very cool if you're going to run through a stereo system or you're recording. Okay, so if I press the button again, then I have uh, my main level output again. So, uh, I'll go back to uh, the page button. We get to aux mix. That's also assignable. The aux can also have stuff uh, come out of that second output, uh, which is used for headphones, right? So perhaps you could... Uh, have you know mixes coming out to both all, all four of those outputs, um, <clears throat> or three outputs, but one is a stereo output. Now, if I click the page button again, I get delay menu. Yay! So I'm on channel one. Let's hear some delay. Yeah. All right. So we've got delay, but you know what? I think I want to hit the parameter button, which gives me additional choices for the delay. Uh, and so you can see we've got uh, lo-fi on there, we've got some um, feedback, repeats, right? You got BPM, and then you got this little guy which kind of gives you, I guess we go down to quarter, 
half, three quarters, and one. I think there's also two thirds in there too. So there's our delay, pretty cool, not very good quality sound. So now we get to our reverb setting. I'm not going to put any rever reverb on uh, channel one, I'll save that for channel two. <clears throat> but I'll keep the delay on. Here's channel two. And I'm going to go to parameter, and uh, here's the magical shimmer. So if I just went with straight reverb. So as you can hear, I've got... I've got delay coming off the uh, anthem pickup and I've got reverb coming off the mag mic, which is nice because I can kind of do that percussion thing and get that nice uh, um, long reverb sound. Now I'm going to bring in a shimmer. So as you can hear, I've got some, um, on my anthem, I've got kind of delay, and then on the mag mic, I've got the, uh, the reverb with shimmer. So if you get to go stereo, uh, while I'm on our main main mix, if I go back to this parameter button, uh, I now can pan left and right. So this makes things really interesting, um, especially for recording, because you can have a delay on one side and, of course, the shimmer uh, reverb on the other side. So that will also work for... Uh, um, for aux, you can shake your aux and of course uh, do panning on your auxes. Okay, so now I'm going to click on the system button right down here. And uh, right, down, right away that gives you an overall snapshot of uh, where your meters are for all four channels. I've only got two channels. I'll click the system button again, and that now brings us to a very important part of this little box because you can actually store scenes and then recall scenes, and you can have up to 10 scenes that you can store. As you can see, you got the, you know, the, the number that you have, and then you can clear, and you can store, and you can recall. So um, today I've got one setting. Tomorrow I might be with four guitar players all plugged in, and we have a different setting for our rehearsals, and I just simply recall it, making the, the, this mixer extremely easy to set up for each scenario. The other way of doing that too is if I click the button again I get to the assigns button and uh, if you can see right here I've got an M and an M plus, so M minus M plus. That means your memory uh, memory locations, uh, this minus would be going down and the plus would be going up. So to give you an example of that, if I push that uh, you can see I'm currently at location 3 and I'm going to descend down to 2, 1, push it again, I'm at 9, 6, and so you can see it's going to allow me to instantly really recall or instantly recall all of these scenes just by a click of a button. So I'm in scene 9 and I'll have all the settings. I'll click again and I'm instantly on scene 6. So very handy if you're on stage and, uh, and you're changing your environment quite a bit. And, um, and yeah, very cool. Um, so if I press the other button, of course you can see it ascends, right? So I'll go back to 6 where it was at. Very awesome. And if I press the system button and hold it, then I get the, uh, the of course, the version, uh, the firmware version, which right now is at 1.02. And you can always go to their, upset, uh, their website and get the latest, latest versions. Very easy to install. And by having this feature, it allows the unit not to become dated. So you can use this unit well into the future. Um, so we'll go back to that menu. If I was to turn this to channel 1 and 2, I've now, see the buttons lit up, and so if I click these, I'm going to, the guitar is going to disappear in both channels. So I turn it back on, and uh, we're live again, right? And uh, so now if I turn this dial, you'll see the next up is 1, 2, and 3, and 4. So that means if I click this button, channel 1 and 2 is off. If I click this button, channel 3 and 4 is off. So let me just make sure that happens. Yeah, no guitar, so we're good. Back on. If I turn it once again, uh, you're going to see that uh, this button will turn off all four channels, and now the button B will turn off the effects. So you can have your effects come on and off as you please, and your channels come on, come on and off. And so I'll press this button and see what happens. Gone. 
Let's see. No effects. Effects. Very cool. If I turn it again, then I have uh, reverb. Jump button one. Now I'm just back to my delay. And uh, now this actually is a temp tempo button now. And now what you could do is with lower buttons, you could have it so. Uh, right now I've got everything going out to the mains. Um, if I turn this one, I could have main and aux have signals. I can have both auxes. I got main to aux and just all sorts of variations in here, which is so great, right? So I'm gonna turn this back to uh, two. So uh, I think that about covers it, man. This is a pretty cool little rig, right? So there you have it, Elite Acoustic uh, Stomp Mix 4. Um, I think it's a game changer. I think it addresses most of the needs of acoustic guitar players with multi-source pickup systems. And uh, like I said, it fits in the palm of your hand. And for a price of $2.99, I think it's, uh, it's unbeatable on the market right now. And uh, very happy to be having one of these and look forward to using it on the road. And thanks to Elite Acoustics for, for making such an amazing device. And until next time, stay well. If you've got any questions, make sure to, of course, uh, email me or post here on, fa or on uh, Facebook or YouTube. And uh, let me know how it works for you. All right, stay well, take care. Ciao for now. Long weaver, eh?